who has been with us uh, in the past years, along with especially our new families, uh, especially those transferring in from Sacred Heart, St. Jerome, um, you know, our public school families. This is your first year here. And I truly hope that, you know, we've been here for well over a month and I hope that everybody is doing well, whether you're home, whether you're remote, uh, whether you're mixed. And so far, I'm gonna say that it's been really positive. I can only speak for myself to say that uh, my daughter who's a senior uh, really loves being in school and actually she really loves the tent, Dr. B. I know we're gonna talk about that later, but for, <laughs> for right now, uh, things are going well. And I truly hope everybody else is adjusting to the changes for this year, not only in school, but just, you know, in life in general, it's just different. Um, so basically we are gonna talk about, for those who haven't, don't know what the PSB is, basically what our mission is and what we try to accomplish. So basically we're trying to engage families, answer questions families have, act like as a soundboard for families. But then we also have our school parts that we are committed to, our volunteers, the way we try to support the school and the staff and you know, whether it's, um, you know, teacher appreciation, the back to school barbecue, you know, I know some things we haven't been able to do, but we're going to talk about them. And then also there's a fundraising aspect that we have a goal every year of trying to accomplish to try to raise funds to not only pay for the things we do for as the parent support board, but also in general to try to give back to the school so that the school can use those funds in any way that they seem appropriate. You know, one year they bought laptops, they've used the funds, you know, when they did some work in the cafeteria or the gym, all that money, no matter where the money comes from, in the end, it all goes back to the school because the school benefits us and it also helps with their uh, scholarship funds and anything they want to use the funds for. So we have a two-prong approach to the fundraising as well. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about our budget. So basically, when it comes to the budget for the PSB, we have a fundraising goal every year of trying to give back at least $10,000 to the school. Most of that fundraising comes from our Christmas tree sales and um, our involvement in the A-plus program and some and our direct donation request now in the past one of the ways the psb raised funds was it was you had to do a minimum amount of volunteer hours or pay like 200 dollars. and we got rid of the required uh, volunteer hours we felt that it was really a struggle to maintain the hours there was a lot of paperwork and tracking that came into that. So we just said, look, if we have an event and we need volunteers, we'll ask for volunteers. And since we rolled that out for two years, it's been great. Anytime we need volunteers, whether it's for the barbecue, teacher appreciation, or any of the other events that we've had, open houses, the response has always been great. Uh, financially, we've done well because of the Christmas tree sales and our A-plus program. But unfortunately this year, we're not having Christmas tree sales. Uh, it was a decision based on the fact that there's a lot of funds that go in buying the trees and you have to make that decision basically over the summer. And there's just too much unknown. I mean, obviously we have no idea what's gonna be happening. So we've decided to forego the Christmas tree sale this year, which, does hit our bottom line pretty well because the Christmas tree sale brings in anywhere between seven to ten thousand dollars. And when you're trying to raise ten thousand dollars, you can see that the majority of the money came from that. So with that, we're really going to be pushing a, a couple of our own little fundraisers. One of them is the A plus program through Stop and Shop. If any of you have a Stop and Shop card, family, friends, um, whoever you know. 
if they're in the New England area, I strongly encourage you to go online, sign up for your stop and shop and designate Archie's at your school. That's an easy four, five, six thousand dollars and you don't even have to do anything. So if you have any questions on the stop and shop program, we can send out the link. It's really a two minute thing. It, it costs nothing. And, and if you shop there, it's just a great quick way for us to make money. The other thing that we're thinking of doing now, Archie's um, is in the process of putting together kind of like a Christmas catalog of gifts. Last year, they did things like the flannel pants and, and they're going to be doing stuff like that. So the PSB might have an opportunity to have something in that catalog that designates funds for, for our use which when that comes out in the next month or so, we'll be sending out some information on that. Also, um, we hope to have, last year we did a little partnership with the Plaza where, you know, if you shopped at the Plaza, there was a little rebate. Again, who knows what shopping is gonna be like this year. I can't even venture to guess going to the mall. Um, the other part about fundraising is that's the, Parent Support Board fundraising. Now, obviously the school has its own fundraising and that's things like, you know, if they're gonna be doing a calendar drive or they're gonna be doing uh, a giving week. Those are separate fundraisers, obviously, that the school does, but as a Parent Support Board, we try to support them with those initiatives as well. If there's the calendar drive and they need people to help count calendars or sort calendars, I think it might be going digital this year, but however that works out, we as a group, we're here to help. So you might be asked to volunteer to do something for that. And if you have time, that would be great. So that's basically, and as far as the budget, so last year, just to give you an idea, we raised close to $29,000. That included the tree sales, the voluntary donations, the gift cards that we raised money for at the end of the year, which was a fabulous, fabulous fundraiser. Um, and in the end, between paying for the trees and paying for the gift cards um, and paying for like the back to school barbecue, which is our responsibility, that left us, that was like 19,000. So we just were shy of our goal with $9,900. So that's money that we give back to the school, which is fabulous. I can't thank everybody enough who was here last year for all the hard work that they did. That was amazing. So we have our goal and hopefully we'll continue with that goal. So um, that's what I have for welcoming uh, our purpose and our budget. And again, we're going to move the meeting along so that in the end, we'll have plenty of time for questions. So with that, I'm going to introduce Kelly. Yeah. And she is our co-vice president. And she's going to talk about our social pages in our school community. So welcome, Kelly, and welcome, everybody. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so the first thing, I'm going to say this on behalf of Dr. V. I know that the school has asked us but as parents we're going to come to you as well i know we've been doing really well we're halfway through october this is this is my dream come true that we would make it this far we've done really well keeping numbers not happening but we have to do our part too not just the school so if we could all try our best to remind our kids on the weekends and after school to try their best with social distancing wearing their masks and not making bad choices so that we don't end up with an outbreak. I'm very happy that we're still in school and I know all of you are probably also very happy. So we just kind of want to, for him, we want to just kind of remind everyone to just keep doing our best. I know it's hard with teenagers. I get it. You know, I have my own and I have a, my brother is a senior, my daughter's a junior. They want to be with their friends. But if we can just kind of remind them to be careful and not expose themselves any more than they have to. The other thing is we have a Facebook page. I hope you're all on it. 
It's called AWHS Parent Resource Page. If you're not on it, please join. If you are on it, please spread the word to other parents that you know. It's done so much better this year. And we wanted to just say we're very impressed with the community we've seen on there. Um, I know we had a little bit of a backlog with books coming to people and uniforms and the amount of community that we saw of parents. Hey, I have a shirt if anyone needs it. Or does anyone have a skirt? I have one. Or people have been really great given a book that someone needs. So this is something we definitely would like to expand so that we can offer that more. Um, and people are really great answering other parents' questions. I know it's hard at the beginning of the year. What shoes do they wear? What time do they go tomorrow? Especially with the PSATs. So it's really helpful. Please join if you're not on there and spread the word if you are on there. So I think that's it. All right, thanks Kelly, I really appreciate it. Um, and now Brenda Coutois, um, our other co-vice president, She's going to talk about our volunteer opportunities and other uh, events that we do to support the school. So, Brenda. Hi, everybody. Thank you tonight for joining us. Uh, basically, what I'm going to talk about first is the teacher appreciation that we do. We've done that for two years now, and it's been awesome. I, Kelly and I, we, we've done it. We, we enjoy doing it so much. And uh, the teachers and the administration, sorry, and staff have loved, loved it. Um, and we have raised, we do um, sign up genius for donations and that we have found, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, we have found that to be such a tool, a great tool to give us donations. And we have done so well that we were able to get the teachers a well-deserved, which I know they love, um, uh, toaster oven for the teacher's room. And now we also got the administration one as well. That's how well we did with that, with the donations that we got from that. It was, it's amazing. And just to see the teachers, you know, come in and enjoy the luncheon, it's, it's fantastic. Um, now I'm gonna talk a little bit what Maurice uh, touched upon with the, drive we did for the gift cards um, last year. At the end of the year, I mean, with COVID and everything, um, in the t and as you all know, and, and I, I, mean, I have a son, he's a junior, and the fact that they didn't miss a minute of learning was such an amazing uh, thing. I mean, it just, we just jumped right in, and I give Dr. V and everybody credit for just jumping right in and making sure our kids had what they needed. And, um, the teachers loved it. We had such an outpouring of support and we we did so well in that drive. I wanna thank everybody that helped us with that drive. And we are gonna, in the future, we are gonna probably run another drive like that because it was so, it was so successful. Um, and the last thing I wanna to touch upon is um, the open houses. Uh, we usually ask volunteers for the open houses that we do, but those open houses are gonna be virtual this year. Um, but even though we can't ask you guys to help for that, we really would love for you to spread the word. We know, we all love our trees. We know our kids are so happy. Oh, yeah. Brenda. And we just want to, you know, spread the word on our. All right, I'm gonna Brenda, just hop in here yeah, just yeah. for a sec. Uh, Brenda, I'm oh, sorry, Brenda. Yes. You're, you're just breaking up a little bit, so I'm sorry to, uh, just sorry. jump in, but I'm just going to say that uh, Brenda's right. Unfortunately, our open houses will be virtual this year, um, but we certainly would appreciate you spreading the word to other families about Archbishop Williams, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, if they want to do a virtual tour, get in touch with um, uh, Michaela Schuster, and she'll set up the tours. And we'll find out more about the open houses as the time goes on. So sorry, Brenda, I wasn't sure why we were having connection no, that's issues. That's all right, Marie, no worries. <laughs> I think you're better now. Um, probably, yeah. thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for everything that you've done. We really appreciate it. Um, so in um, the one thing that I did forget to mention when, it, when I was talking about the Christmas trees is 
Last year, we did partner with the Boy Scouts, and the Boy Scouts, I believe, are going to have the Christmas tree sale. It's not going to be at our Archbishop Williams parking lot. I think they're trying to work out something with St. Thomas More, but I'll keep everybody informed on that because I know we have many families and alumni who look forward to getting their tree from us every year, and I know there will be disappointment. So, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to support the Scouts because last year we started a partnership with them. And I think that that's a great partnership. It was very, very successful. And I wish them all the best this year. And I hope that we can support them as well. So um, that is what I have for this meeting. I know it was kind of just a brief introduction. We try to have a meeting every month. So next month, when we want to talk about what we're doing with the Christmas catalog, we can talk, we can get some ideas together on that. I'll send out an email and those that are interested in joining that discussion, if you have an idea of something that you would like us to consider putting in the catalog, let us know. Um, so in now, I think we are going to unmute. If you have questions, you can ask questions or you can send us a message and we'll try to answer your questions through the message board as well. So Dr. B, um, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. You can uh, have your comments and then we'll take questions. Thanks. Thank you all. Um, so really, uh, this is, I want to pre appreciate everybody taking some time out of their evening to to learn more about what the PSB is about. Um, we can't function out as a school community without the support of our parents. Um, on, on, now more than ever in terms of this, yeah, I mean, your support of the school in a lot of different ways and what we're trying to accomplish together is invaluable. Um, and, and I think, you know, the forum like this, one of the biggest challenges we have this year is how do we build community in a virtual space? You know, I've talked to a number of parents, talked to students, you know, it's a challenge too. You know, we're behind masks, we're behind these plexiglass shields. Um, we, you know, what makes this place so special is, is our community. So every single forum, whether it's virtual, or in person, that we can build community, we wanna take advantage of it. You know, I was remarking, one of the most interesting things from watching the students in, in, that are here in person, is um, first of all how good everybody is in terms of being attentive to our COVID protocols in terms of mask wearing while we're in school but one of the most remarkable things is when the students go outside for high school recess as it as it's called as the kids kind of call the amount of students you know I would think you know the rule is simple if you can be six feet apart you can take your mask off um, one of the things that we're all sort of amazed by is how many students would rather keep their masks on and remain closer to each other so they can talk. Um, and I think it shows just a little bit how we're all kind of looking for community and how important it is, you know, every single opportunity that we have. So there's a lot of good things going on. Um, you know, I think the year has gotten off to about as good a start as, as it could have. Obviously, there's some things we would have liked to have gone better. A couple of things have been alluded to, uh, textbooks especially. Um, but I'm um, happy to kind of talk about a lot of things. The, the best thing though, I'm happy that you know, open houses and things were talked about. We are coming into that season. There are lawn signs to be had. We're kind of pushing them among students. So if anybody would like to put up a lawn sign, we'd appreciate you know, asking a student to pick one up. And just to kind of know that we're, we're all in this together and um, you know, as one Archbishop Williams community with all of our new families, I hope that you, you know, feel part of this community. I hope that your sons and daughters are feeling part of this community. And um, yeah, it's just a real honor and privilege to uh, be able um, to be part of this. So, so now to kind of open it up to some questions. Uh, question number one, uh, I think is where do we get lawn signs? Um, those are available in the student life office. Um, if you contact, uh, you know, have your son and daughters 
stop by Student Life, or if you email either uh, Mr. Schuster, Coach K, email me, email Ms. Mariano, anybody, um, we will make sure there's a lawn sign with your child's name on it to come home at Student Life for pickup. Um, other uh, there's a question there about donations to the PSB. There is a link on the parents page on the on the Archbishop Williams website with the annual voluntary contribution. That link should be working. It's a $50 contribution that we ask each family to make every year, but I will double check and make sure the link is up and running. And then I will send it out when I send out these notes uh, in the next couple of days is to recap because not only are we recording it, but I'll send out a recap as well. And I'll make sure that that link is working along with the link to the Stop and Shop program and any, any of the links that anybody's looking for, the Facebook page and things like that. Um, I have a suggestion. I'm thinking about the, the fact that we can't do the Christmas trees and that that was such a sentimental fundraising effort for the school. Um, what if we did ornaments, sort of like commemorative ornaments um, that could be sold to the community? Um, you know, you could have a little fun with it, pandemic Christmas or quarantine Christmas or, or what have you, but um, so that you're still marking that sentimental event that was the Christmas tree sale, um, but with something that people could use on their home, their own home trees as well. Um, and a, another thought I had, and this is probably for your, um, your advancement development team. Um, but one of the things that I work in nonprofit myself, and one of the things that we find the most compelling about capturing and recording what's happening um, in our society right now in this pandemic and the struggles that we have is actually getting um, the, we call them clients, but you would call them students to tell their story. So maybe there's a, um, a three and a half minute or four minute Vimeo story that um, talks to the students, talks to the parents, talks to the teachers who I'm sure have tremendous stories to tell. I can't even imagine um, what they're going through. But if, just my idea is it's a real opportunity to, to capture the stories of Archbishop Williams and how you got from September to you know, January. Um, and it's been, a, it's been an incredible um, feat for everybody involved. And I think that's worth um, capturing and, and, and marketing in some way, shape, or manner. Yes. I can speak to the, Ms. Coffey, thank you for that. I can speak to the latter point. Um, ornaments typically have been, I don't know if ornaments are in the works for this year. That's definitely been something we've done in the past. So I think, I think your point is well taken there. Um, we are uh, in the process of story capturing. We've had video camera crews um, in for the last two days. Um, we've been working on, we do a grandparents day for grade seven and eight. So um, we've been doing a special virtual Grandparents Day video that will be coming out. Um, we've had, uh, we're doing, as part of the virtual open house, um, we've been filming that, um, and that's entirely student driven. So there are, our, our virtual open house will have like that core video will have practically no adults in it. It'll be all sort of students walking you through the school. And we are capturing stories. We are, we have a, a sort of videographer that we are partnered with. And they've done a lot of good work with us. So I think that's Sounds great. Um, that's in the works, but I think your point's well taken. We more stories the better. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you, that's uh, that you're absolutely right there. Um, a couple of things about picture day. We're we are um, student life has been working with Life Touch to get them in. We're gonna try and do this over a series of days, hopefully on our um, like try and do it in the lunch break. We don't want to pull students from class. For this so we're trying to schedule these out um, with our photographer it's just tricky to time everything um, but yeah we know that needs to happen and um, and then how many students do we have currently enrolled in the school um, I think 656 at last check um, in terms of current enrollment it's our largest enrollment in um, in a number of years um basically um uh, basically all of our grades uh, we have a little room in ninth grade but all of our other grades are basically full is that um, only high school or uh middle school as well that includes everybody 
Yeah. Okay. Dr. Um, can I just ask you real quick? I know a few people have been confused, including me. On the day the seniors take their SATs, are the kids doing remote check-in yes. or is it remote all day? We're going to be we're going so we're going to be switching the remote format a, a little bit uh, for the this upcoming Friday. We're blocking out a period, um, and sort of teachers are going to like we're going to block out a seven-day period, like thirty-minute chunks with breaks in between for all classes. Scheduling the remote check-ins and the meetings have been um, well, they've been difficult. And even even trying to coordinate a schedule for our AP classes, I have an AP class myself. Trying to, even amongst the nine AP teachers or so, nine or ten, to try and block off individual times. So we're going to create a seven period day of 30 minutes, and then um, the teachers will then give the students instructions as to sort of their expectations for that block. Um, and, and basically, we want um, we we're sort of wanting to frame it now that we have kind of at mid quarterlies. Um, there are more students that need to be taking advantage of that remote instruction um, and that extra day. So um, we are going to be structuring it to have um, more people involved and um, as opposed to I think some students viewing it as kind of a day off, we want more people engaged with that day. So I didn't quite grasp the seven period. How are you doing that? Is it going to be on the Fridays? Yeah, so, uh, so on the Friday and on the SAT day, so uh, this Friday, first of all, this Friday is a normal day of school. Right. Um, right. Next Friday, it will be our sort of last Friday remote check-in for October. And that day is going to be, we are going to put, um, uh, that we're going to put a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the students are, have seven periods. So we're going to put out Kind of a bell schedule so to speak a little bit like we did in the spring where period one will meet from this time to this time and then the students for that class for that day um the teachers will give instructions as to sort of their expectations um going to be meeting we're going to be doing x we're going to be doing y um past october we met with our department chairs today um we're going to do this schedule for this friday and then for the schedule for the tuesday the 27th and then afterwards, we're going to reevaluate what we're going to do. Um, we're going to talk to our chairs going forward. Um, really, it's hard to commit. We're still kind of feeling this out for what works um, and what's going to maximize student learning while balancing all the, the different things that we're doing. So we're, you know, we've got the two fr we got Friday the 23rd. We have Tuesday the 27th for senior SATs. Obviously, the seniors aren't going to have class that day. Um, most of the senior class is taking advantage of the SATs. Um, and then from there, we're going to circle back with our department chairs and, and evaluate where we are and see what we want to do going forward. Um, there are only two weeks in between Thanksgiving and the Veterans Day holiday. There's only two full five day weeks in November, but we still want to see what's going to, what, what's going to, um, what's going to be the most academically What's going to be the most productive use of the time that we have? Good questions. We're still figuring this out. Um, other questions, other things that I can answer? I have, I have a question, Dr. V. Um, sure. So I'm currently working at home. And so my son, Ryan, has been uh, doing online school because we are not um, driving them to school. And I was wondering, how do you fill out the paperwork for attendance um, with regards to that? Like, do I fill him out for totally online? Because when I return to work, he will be coming back to school. Sure. Sometimes um, here or there, he will be also attending school. So how, what do I need to do just to be accurate for attendance, please? Yeah, sure, not a problem. So there is a, um, there's a form on, st on family ID, sort of like, um, so there's an absence form, which you would do you know, on a daily basis, but, uh, but to change your election, there's a separate form on family ID. Um, and if you can't find it, just reach out to the student life office. Um, either that's rather uh, Mr. Kinchurf or Ms. Mariano, and they can help you out. They, they can sort of do that. But yeah, it's not a problem. But it's Thank a form so on family ID, and then we'll welcome back to being in person. Thank you. 
And on that note, may I just interject here and ask a question too. Um, originally, I understood that um, the students can decide to either stay home when they would like to, if they felt uncomfortable coming to school, and they could, um, you know, do the remote learning and so on. And, but then now I saw where they're going to be penalized if they stay home in terms of going to after school activities and sports and things like that. And I'm just wondering why is that? Because if they, um, you know, do the full school day and everything, why um, can they not go to their sporting activities? Or yes. Whatever? So yeah, no, good question. So I mean, this has been our policy from the beginning of the year, but just to sort of, so basically we're trying to get students um we we know we need to be flexible you know the the flexibility is important because there's a reason you know, there's a lot of reasons why a student who might be normally going to school on a given day might need to stay home for a given day but we want students um to be in sort of one of you know we want students to make a basic election as to what their um basic point of action is it helps us for planning purposes um, to have a basic idea of whether a student is typically going to be in school or typically going to be home. Um, and so if they're, you know, and if they're in either bucket, then if they're attending school, then they can go to their after school activity. If a student is typically in school, um, sort of our, our, our general sort of idea behind this is, you know, if you, if you weren't able to come to school that day, much like under normal circumstances. If you're not able to come to school that day, you normally don't um, participate in an Well, I understand activity. that if they are yeah. ill or something like that, of course, you know, I agree yeah. with that. And, and, and so, so for us, it's just tracking it and mm -hmm. trying to keep track of the, I can tell you that tracking attendance in this day, like right now is, has become like quadruply more difficult, even with family ID, even trying to update, the students that are going to be here, going to be attending remotely via Zoom, keeping attendance records. Mrs. Connolly um, is doing tremendous work in the student life office. So just trying to track all of that and, and who should be attending and not attending and, and eligible for extracurriculars. We kind of needed to set a couple of markers so that we can keep, keep track of it. And so that's what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, masses. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you, Ms. Maynard. So um, uh, we are uh, working on masses. Uh, so what we're going to be doing instead of school-wide masses are individual class masses. So um, because we can fit a grade level in the auditorium, socially distanced, and one of the joys of having a chaplain, and especially folks coming from Sacred Heart families, uh, but Father Wally is just a real blessing. Uh, in school. I mean, just absolutely great having him back. Um, we like to say back home at Archbishop Williams because he was our longtime chaplain. Um, and so um, uh, basically, um, we are working out a schedule of coming for, I think, for November. Uh, we've had masses uh, where we're going to have like individual grade level masses. Um, and that schedule will be coming out and we'll explain because it'll be our first day to do our mass dress uniform for the kids to be in shirts and ties and their uh, button down shirts. <clears throat> um, uh, so that's coming. And then, and then the seventh, eighth, and the seventh and eighth grade who had their retreat days over PSAT, they also started with in mass. And yes, we will be live streaming it. That's a good Great. point so that people can access that and, and join with us for that. That's fabulous. Thanks, Dr. V. No, uh, thank you for that. Um, I really can't comment on how many students are quarantining uh, or if, at all, if at all, because of any COVID, but I will say the protocols are working extremely well. I'll say uh, Braintree Board of Health um, has been extremely, extremely satisfied uh, with our protocols and, and the things that we've had in place. Um, so, uh, and, and part of the reason why the protocols are working as well as they have is, and it's a point of gratitude towards our parent community, as everybody has been up front. Um, the lines of communication have been really strong. And I think um, Nurse Galvin has done uh, tremendous work there too. 
Um, and so um, yeah, I really can't say just, just how good a job our nursing office has done. And, and with kind of the protocols in place and the job our students are doing well in school, um, we've been able to, as situations arrive, kind of minimize uh, time out of school. <clears throat> Dr. V, I just wanted to answer that someone just said to include Ms. Connolly on the teacher appreciation. We actually, at the end of last year when we did it, we included all the varsity coaches, all the custodians, all of the teachers, all of the staff, every single person in admin. The only one we didn't include because we didn't know what to get him yet was President Duggan, but we have since taken care of it and got him his toaster that he wanted. They had to make room. It wasn't approved by the rest of the staff over there in admin to get him a toaster yet, but we've managed to, now that's done too. So there wasn't anyone left off. It, we didn't just do the teachers because we knew that everyone, it was a team effort. The nurses, I think, I don't think we forgot anyone. Yeah, no, the, no, it was fabulous. And, so, and, um, and we, will, no, I, we will do that again if that's how we have to do it again this year, if we can't go in with food and do it the old way. Uh, and I will say, by the way, the, the, um, the leadership team here dropped off uh, treats for the faculty the last two days uh, during PSAT. Um, proctoring these exams can often be just exhausting work, you know, just kind of sitting there. I mean, not as exhausting as students taking the PSAT. But um, nonetheless, uh, it, was, um, it was really, really well received by the staff to have that, that little pick me up. So I want to thank you for that. It was our pleasure. Anything we can do to uh, help you guys, you know, help our kids, then it's certainly well worth it. It truly is. It truly is. And I wanted to give a shout out, shout out to Kate Kennedy. Hi, Kate. Hi, Marie. <laughs> Kate, uh, Kate and I go back. Our daughters were in uh, pre, I don't pre, know. preschool. <laughs> They were in the baby preschool. room together at kinder care. Yeah. <laughs> nice so, to see you again. Thanks for bringing me aboard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I think, uh, and thanks for, you know, your kind words and your support. This is obviously uncharted territory. Questions come up, we don't even, can't even answer. Like what's going to happen? We we don't know, but all we do know is that we we love our school. We're grateful for everybody who is involved in the school at every level, and we cannot do it alone. Nobody does anything alone. We're all in this together. So please, you know, reach out to us. Reach out to the school if it's a specific school question. You know, obviously, Dr. V and the Student Life Office, uh, general questions, we can help guide you to get to the right person if you're not sure, and, um, and be involved. If we, if we ask, you know, for help or volunteers, anything you can do is always really greatly appreciated. Um, so. the, the, the last thing I'll say is, um, uh, thank you for your support. Is that you know one of the one of the, the signs that I know things are going well, relatively speaking, is um, I've been able to do a lot more focusing on school related things as opposed to um, COVID issues. Like I think like on the last day, like the last time we were in normal school, I told more students to take their sweatshirts off than their um, than to put their masks on. But like we are at mid quarterlies. So, you know, I'm hoping everybody's able to access PowerSchool, access Schoology. Um, if you have questions, if you have issues about grades, please reach out to teachers. We're also putting together early, you know, academic plans. Um, for some students, it definitely was shaking off the cobwebs and getting back in school shape and turning in homework on a regular basis and so forth. Um, so as you're kind of keeping in touch with that, um, you know, by all means, reach out. We're here to we're here to help all your teachers want your students to succeed so um, if you have questions about certain things um please um and i will you know in particular as we'll be reaching out as well we had our we met last week as a staff um and that's just kind of a thing and 
you know, homework is important, that daily preparation is important. So getting back in those habits of school in, in all aspects, um, you know, are important. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. V. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We really appreciate it. All y'all right. have a good night. Thank you all. It was great nice to see you. some of you, and we'll see you soon. Again, Next email time. us if you have any questions. Uh, AWHSPSB at awh.org. Um, and uh, everybody have a great night and have a great week. Thank you, and you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Good to see Thank you all. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. Good job. Thank you.